Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Mia and I run Sticky Kitten Crafts. I am going to do a market breakdown for you today. I had my third market on Sunday. This was the same market that I did back in May. So if you go and check out my very first market breakdown video, this is the same exact place. Um, same organizer, everything like that. I'll tell you a couple of things that are a little bit different compared to the first time when we talk about the results, but um, overall, same same kind of vibe. So this is, if you didn't watch that video, this um, market is held at a brewery, and at this brewery, they have a lot of like outdoor seating on a wooden kind of patio, if you will, or a wooden deck, and then they also have a really big kind of lawn area that has a bunch of chairs and seating and a lot of people will just come and hang out for the day. They'll bring their kids and just kind of hang out because it's a really nice little little place to be. Um, this organizer does these markets once a month and they are usually from 12, sorry, one to six. Last time they moved it up 12 to five so that it would align. Um, I'll just talk about it now. One of the things that was different about this market is that when I had my market back in May, there was a separate, completely separate market going on across the street. So there was a lot more foot traffic just because there were kind of, there was like that kind of really big market and then this market going on at the same time. So um, that was one of the things that kind of differed, but um, we'll dive into kind of what I sold, I'll walk you through the order of it, and we will just chat a little bit about my experience. The market started at one o'clock, and you were allowed to get there at about 11.30 to start setting up. Um, I knew this brewery opened, I think, around noon, so I got there right at 11.30 so I could get everything set up pretty quickly because last time there were people like bombarding my booth before I was even able to set up. So I wanted to make sure that I had enough time to like really like, get my things out there and get everything ready to go. Um, one of the things that I can't stress enough is that it made it so much easier um, because I had already set up my whole display at home beforehand. Um, I didn't take photos this time because it was basically the same as my market I just did a couple of weeks ago but um definitely super helpful if you can set everything up beforehand make sure you know where everything should go and um I like to actually like pack up all my things into bags so that it's like in the section of the table it's going to be in um that really helps so just like keep that into consideration if you're new to doing markets or maybe you struggle with like getting your booth set up every time um once you like start doing them you get the hang of it but um I definitely think for me since I haven't done that many markets like doing the reps of putting it together in my house has been like astronomically helpful so um okay so with that being said, I'll walk you through all the different items that I sold. Um, I'll tell you how much money I made. And I will, um, at the end of this video, I will try to, I'm going to take a pause and I'll try to go and figure out like for my time and how much all of my supplies cost. Because I know I've seen a bunch of people complaining that people don't say how much their like actual profit was. So I'll break all of that down for you at the end. Um, okay. So again, market started at one o'clock. My first sale was at 12.56. So again, super glad I was there and had everything set up. Um, the first item that I sold was a stressy blob. I sell these for $15. I was thinking about making them like 10 or 12 for this market because at my last one, a couple of people had been like, oh, like why are they just as expensive as these like bigger frogs? But um I had made my sign and just said like stressy toys and so I just kind of kept it at that price but um anyways I, I was selling the stressy blobs for 15 so that was the first item that I sold those were definitely a popular hit at my market 
The second item that I sold, I made these little no sew birds and ghosts with little hats on them. Um, I'll include a photo here if I have them for any of my items, but I sold one of my little birds with the little hats. I think this one, um, the girl got it with um, one of the little pink flower hats, so that was very cute. The next item that I sold was um, a Charmander snuggler or a fire lizard dragon snuggler. Um, these people were so cute. They came over with their son, daughter. Ooh, I don't remember. I think son. No, daughter. And um, I, they came over and they were um, just taking a look at all my little Pokemon snugglers and um, their daughter really liked all of them so she actually followed me on instagram as well and like said she was thinking about ordering something else so that was really exciting um because the last time i was at this market i gave out a ton of business cards like half of my business cards and which i probably had like maybe two, like 200 or something and i probably gave out about a hundred of them and i didn't get i think i got one person to follow me on instagram so i was really glad that she followed me and um like i said she said she was gonna reach out and maybe order something else so that was exciting and i sell my snugglers all of them for 35 dollars. so that was that and then after that i sold a stressy frog so the little leggy frog with the um stress blob in it those are a huge hit I sold him for 15. next i sold a mini pumpkin and a stressy frog um this is really cute it's like a a brother and sister pair the sister wanted to get one of my pumpkins and then the brother wanted a leggy frog and i was actually making the leggy frogs like while i was sitting there because it was an easy thing to make and because you're putting the little stress blobs in them you don't have to use as much stuffing so it's a great project to bring with me because i didn't have to bring a ton of stuffing um i think i ended up making like three or four leggy frogs while i was sitting there and i think I sold out of most of them that I ended up making. Um, so I was glad I was kind of making them on demand. But this little kid wanted one, but he wasn't sure about the color. And I was like, oh, I'm making this one. And it was one of the like variegated yarns. It was like the blue and green one. And I was like, do you like this color? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, okay, what color stress ball do you want? So he kind of got to like make it as he went. And they went over to the park and came back and picked it up um, when I was done. But so I was just like kind of a fun little experience for them that he kind of got to pick it out himself. But so anyway, sold a mini pumpkin for 12 and a stressy frog for 15 on that uh, order. And then the next one, I was so excited about this. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen, I sold my Miss Frizzle tapestry and that made me so happy. Um, it was a really sweet gal that came up and she works in academic advising and she said that she um, has a wall for all of these like local creator creations that she's bought. So she was like, this will be the perfect thing for my wall. So it made me so happy that she bought it and it will be in a good home and hopefully it will um, motivate some young people that she's advising. But um, I loved that. So I have a picture, so I'll include that here. I ended up selling this for 75. Um, for this project and for a lot of my tapestries, I'm very bad about um, timing myself. So I may have like undercut myself a little bit, but honestly, I was glad I got it sold and it was a decent price, I think. Um, so I was glad about that. But so I sold that one for 75, which was awesome. Then uh, next I sold one of my little mini leggy frog keychains. That one I sold for $5. Next I sold another one of my no so birds with a hat on it. Um, I think this person got a mallard with a candy corn hat so that was really fun. Um, that made me happy. I kept telling them like I didn't have good signage so I was trying to tell them like oh like you can like if I saw people looking at them, I was like, oh, like, you can swap out the hats. And the girl was like, no, this one is perfection. And I was like, great. <laughs> so she just took the mallard with the little candy corn hat as it was. But um, I do think that people liked the idea that they could choose their own hat. 
um, which was awesome, but I also sold a mini ghost. These ones were $10. Um, this is the AQ crochet pattern. I've made both the larger ghosts and the mini ghosts, and then I modified the pattern to make a medium sized ghost. They would use the same hats as my no sew ducks. So, um, if you look at my video of my booth, which I'll roll some tape. You'll see that I um, like had two different ghost sizes. The little one that was with the rest of my Halloween stuff is the mini ghost pattern by AQ Crochet. And then the one that has the hat that's up by my no sew birds, that is the modified pattern that I created. Just in case you are curious about the sizing. And I had a bigger ghost that I sold at my previous market. So if you look back at like my Instagram reels, you can kind of see the size difference. Um, so yeah. Next, I sold another Stressy Frog. This one again, $15. Next, I sold a Gary the Snail. And this um, sale happened right at 2 o'clock. So all those things that I just was talking about all sold within the first hour. This market, similar to the last time I was there, pretty busy in the beginning and then really tapers down at the end. Um, but... At 2 o'clock, I sold Gary the snail. This was like the little Spongebob snail that I made. Um, I didn't love that pattern, but I might make another one because like this girl like went crazy for it. But she kind of saw him. She was standing up on the deck area. And she looked down and she's like, Gary, I need him. And she like ran right down and bought him. So that was super fun. But um, so she got him and I had Gary at $35. Next, I made a couple. So I bought a claw machine. I didn't update you guys on this, but I had, I bought a claw machine for my market and I wanted to use it at this market because I knew there would be a lot of kids, but I ended up making a bunch of little mini items, mostly the items by Becky's plushies. So I made the little capybara, I made her free oxalotl pattern that you can find on Instagram and um they ended up being too big and too heavy for my claw machine so that made me really sad and given just like that I had made a couple of them I didn't have enough time to really make smaller items that could go in the claw machine so I didn't bring it to this market but I'm definitely going to bring it to my next few and that's one of my goals over the next month is to make a lot more smaller items but it won't be these little plushies because they do not work for my claw machine. Um, but anyways, I sold one of the mini velvet oxalotls that I made. I sold him for $10. It's probably a little bit cheap, but it was nice to just like have him in my area with all my other little $10 items. Um, I also sold a mini stingray for $10 at the same time. So that was good. Next. I sold um, a stressy blob and a normal leggy frog. Next thing I sold was a velvet scrunchie. Um, a girl came up and she was like, oh my gosh, are these scrunchies stretchy? And I was like, yeah, like go ahead and like test it out or like, you know, like stretch on it a little bit if you want. So she did and she's like, oh my God, I need one. So she got a purple scrunchie. Um, and then she actually came back later. I don't know where she was. Like she wasn't at the brewery that I was at, I don't think. She was like somewhere else. And she came back specifically to tell me that she got so many compliments on her scrunchie. <laughs> but I was just really glad to sell one because I haven't sold like a single scrunchie yet. So I was happy to have sold that one. Um, next I sold another stressy frog. Definitely a bestseller for me. Um, next, I sold another mini stingray. Those are again another great hit. That was that was um, ten dollars. Next, I sold a loaf cat. Um, I sold the orange one. I actually sold this to the girl that bought the Miss Frizzle tapestry. She came back and said that her aunt was in the hospital or something, so she wanted to get a um, cat, and this one looks like her cat, so she bought it. Um, so that one was twenty dollars. And then 
I sold another stressy frog. Next, I sold another regular leggy frog and a stressy frog. Next, I sold um, a mini pumpkin and a mini poppable mushroom. And the mini pumpkins, again, were 12. My mini poppable mushrooms are seven. Those were another item that I wanted to put in my claw machine and just couldn't, couldn't get it to pick it up. So that was awesome. Um, okay, next, I ended up selling a Maybell chicken. This was, I think, the only chicken I sold the whole day. And the little kid and his dog were sitting kind of like just across from my booth. They ended up coming back to my booth after a little bit. Like the kid was like kind of like holding his chicken. And then he realized that he wanted something else. So he upgraded. So I have the chicken in here and then I have it as returned. Um, because he ended up upgrading it to an alligator. I made one alligator. It was the cutest little thing. I'll include a picture here. Um, I sold him for $50. Um, the little boy loved him. He wanted to trade up again for an octopus. Um, and the dad was trying to get the grandma to give him the like $20 difference so he could trade up again. But I was low key kind of happy that he didn't because he had been playing with the alligator for probably like 30 or 40 minutes by that point, And the alligator was a little bit dirty. So I was like, I'm glad. Um, he didn't, but, um, they were very sweet. They were super nice. Um, and they took a photo by my sign that I made for my booth, which was really fun. Okay. And then the last thing I sold was a, I guess I did sell another Maybell chicken. Honestly, I don't remember selling this, but I guess we sold another one, um, for $10. And that was the last item that I sold. So I really didn't have that many sales, honestly. So I had 22 individual sales and I think I probably sold about 30-ish items because a few of those had two items in them. So somewhere around like 30 items. So in total, I will tell you how much I made and then I'll take a little pause so I can figure out how much like all of that was actual like profit. So on that Sunday, I brought in $516.60. My booth fee was $65, I think. Um, or did she raise it to $75? Let me look. Okay. Um, sorry. It took me a minute to figure out how much this one was because it was $65 when I did it in May and she actually upped the price to be $75. So if we do 516 minus 75, that's $441 that I made from this market. Um, definitely not as good as the first one. Like I said, there was some, a lot of like definitely lower traffic just given that the other market wasn't happening right across the street. But definitely still a lot of people came by. Um, super grateful that people got a couple of my more expensive items to really help boost up the sales. Um, I will also say that at this market, there was another crochet artist. And um, I was kind of surprised at this because there's only about 15 vendor spots. And she kind of like handpicks people for the this market. So I was kind of surprised that she chose two different like crochet artists to be there and you know including myself but um it was like slightly disappointing but um I will say like at the first market there were definitely crochet artists but they were like at the the market across the street not at the brewery um so there was less like direct competition like if people weren't going to the market across the street and they were just hanging out at the brewery um their kids would have only had the choice of like the things in my booth but um so i think that probably definitely impacted my sales a little bit as well um but you know it, it is what it is i know at every market i won't be the only crochet artist like i'm not delusional to think that but um definitely just like slightly disappointing given it is a smaller 
market and given that the booth fee is like kind of high I think for like a five hour market but um honestly a lot of the booth fees in my area are pretty expensive this is like the ch one of the cheaper ones that I found so anyways that is, those are a couple of the things that I think may have impacted my sales but otherwise um I think we did pretty good so um I'm very happy with how this market turned out would definitely do it again um in the future for sure so um I will pull some numbers really quick and I will try to let you know um how much of my items like or like yeah basically what the cost of materials was so I can give you a better breakdown so I'll be right back so I did a little tallying up um and I calculated how much of my like $516 was tax. I also calculated how much the cost of my supplies were for all of the items I sold, how much time, um, because I do $15 per hour for each item. Um, so I'll give you a quick rundown. I sold $516, which included the tax. So $28.54 of that was tax that was being collected. Um, and then out of all the items I sold, 27 items, my cost for my supplies was $56.92. Now I will say that it should be a little bit higher than that because I am missing a couple of items. I didn't measure like how much um, yarn I used for a couple of my things. One was the Snuggler, one was Gary the Snail, one was the Mini Velvet Oxlotl, and one was the Mini Ghost. So I would guess my total cost of supplies is probably closer to like $75. We'll give that as like a rough estimate. My total cost of time, so how much money I collected based on how much like time I've spent and how much like that was built into part of my price was $257. Um, so I guess my total profit based on like these numbers. So my total profit, I calculate using the sale price minus my like built in cost, which includes my supplies and my time. So if you take the total sales, including, not including tax, and subtract out the cost of supplies and the cost of my time, um, the total profit is about 170. So then if my, um, I can do like a better like breakdown, um, I might do that later as I kind of digest this or like look at a few other people's, but so I sold total $516. You take out, if you do 516 minus 2854, that's 487.46. And then um, if you subtract out my booth fee, that is 412. And then if you subtract out my supplies is a total profit we'll just go with like minus cost of supplies it's a total profit of 337 so definitely dwindles down as you start to look at the numbers so again 51660 for how much total I brought in um minus the 28.54 in tax so that brings it to 487.46 if you subtract out my 75 dollar booth fee it's then down to 412.46 and then if you subtract out the cost of my supplies, which again, I'm guesstimating about $75. I know for sure it's at least $56.92. Um, the $75 might be a little bit high, but I made a total profit of about $337 without accounting for my time. If you want to subtract out my time estimate, I made a total profit of about $80. So... As you can see, crochet is not super profitable, um, but $80 is still good, um, especially just kind of given the low traffic and like kind of lower sales. So I hope you liked this video. I hope this was helpful. Um, I hope you liked that breakdown, including the cost of supplies and kind of like all the other added in fees. Um, 
and let me know if you have any questions about my market. If not, I will see you guys in the next one. I hope you have a great rest of your day, week, um, and I hope that you are having the best time crocheting. I will see you guys soon. Thank you.